along this fence line. A few more yews and lambs here. I'm going to be moving them today. I'm moving them to uh, one of my favorite fields because I like to see what they're going to be grazing as soon as they get in there because it's the most species rich of our fields. And um, so I like following them in and seeing what they're eating to see what they need. So it's time to wake these uh, these yews and lambs up and herd them to another location. And Bear is hunting squirrels, his favorite pastime. He would never have made any good at doing anything with sheep because he looks up into the trees more than he looks down in the ground. So, ladies, you're gonna move out. Come on. Aggie's done her one lamb really well. She had a triplet and one of the bottle lambs is hers. Then she got mastitis and one of the lambs died. So the one lamb she's done really well on. Come on, woo! Come on. Yeah. Go on, shoo! Come on. They've grazed this down pretty well. <laughs> hey, lazy bones. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How are you, Ebony? Time to get up. Come on, Ebony. No, don't go this way. Though I see somebody in the bushes. Come on, ladies or lady. Go on. The neighbors are observing. Look at the crab apples. Crab apples are in bloom. There's, we have several. My grandfather planted loads of crab apples. There's one. There's another. There's another in behind there. There's another there. Perfect location. Now, Ebony, we're going to shift you out to the new field. It's where the daffodils are. Okay, go on. Ebony says, who are you talking to? I'm not moving. I have no interest in moving, except getting a head scratch. You're not being much help, are you, Inca? Because Ebony ignores you. Now, Pepper, you better move. Come on, ladies. Come on. Woo. Come on. No, leave my trees alone. Leave my trees alone. You, leave my trees alone. Leave my baby trees alone. Come on, Ebony. You gotta follow everybody out.
No, leave the daisies alone. Nah. Leave the tulips alone. Nah. Come on, leave the tulips alone. I think that's everybody in. So I'm going to open this. And these girls are going to come in. Come on, ladies. Trying to eat some pheasant eye daffodils. They're the last ones to be flowering. The last of the daffodils. See, there's bluebells in here, dandelions, daffodils, all kinds of things. So the sheep are going to have an absolute blast. Big mouthfuls can be chomped. Beautiful, different varieties of uh, dandelions. These very sharp toothed ones or the round, the like, that's a thistle. But um, whole varieties of dandelions, as you can see, like I was saying before, you've got that kind of dandelion versus that kind of dandelion. You can see there are two different kinds of dandelions right there, they're different leaves. What's interesting is they're leaving the, that lamb's right next to some, they're leaving the um, cow parsley. This is cow parsley. If the flies were bothering them, they'd be heading right towards the cow parsley. And it's a kind of a fly repellent. So the lambs are full of the joys of variety. But underneath those chestnut trees are lots of cow parsley. So this evening they'll probably be down there eating the cow parsley for, as a kind of a fly repellent. So here they're going through lots of buttercups, um, dandelions, daisies, clovers, uh, there's yarrow leaves, there's uh, all kinds of stuff on this hill that they're getting. If I come down, you can see there's uh, clover, uh, that's one kind of uh, buttercup here. Then there's all these kind of daisies, uh, more dandelions. Uh, there's yarrows and bird's foot trefoil and um, vetches. Here's some yarrow. There's yarrow. This is yarrow, this ferny looking thing. Yes, and you're not a ferny looking thing, you're a puppy. So they're having all kinds. She's eating the dandelion stems. She's just going for literally the stems. They're not, they don't even have the flowers on them and they're full of rich of vitamins and minerals. Look, she has some cow parsley on her back. She must've walked past some. It's 
So you can see here's uh, there's one of the purple clovers that are flowering in here, and all kinds of different things. Here's cow parsley. No, sorry. Ah, uh, not cow parsley. Um, I'm being stupid. I can't think what that flower is. I know it so well. A uh, milk um, cowslip. Cowslip, not cow parsley. So they're having a bounty in this field. It has the diverse, highest number of different grasses, as well as things like it has the um, the. Um, Oh, I'm being stupid. It begins with P. Ah, God, my brain is fried. Parsley, I stabbed my finger with the um, hoof trimmers. I was trimming some yo's feet and the blade went really deep into my nail. So I might have to go and, I have to go and see when my last tetanus shop was. Um, so there's loads of um, plantain. That was plantain that we just passed. So you can see they're very happy sheep grazing a very diverse sward. And there's like three or four different kinds of daisies in here, but you're not a daisy, are you? You're an alpaca that is gonna unpack a crea at some stage. No, leave her alone. She's fine. We're hoping she's gonna unpack a crea. That's what a baby alpaca, and when they have their baby, it's called unpacking. There's a bit of trivia for you. So see, there's more cow parsley here. And then this is a different kind of um, buttercup again. So there's varieties of uh, different kinds of buttercups. And here is again, another kind of uh, dandelion. And there's shepherd's purse. And here you can see right here, that's a different grass. That's one grass. Here's another grass. So uh, that's just an immediate uh, obvious example. You can see the different uh, tonal changes of the different grasses, but there's many, many different grasses in here. I'm very pleased with how this field is turning out. So they are a happy bunch of sheep now. And I have to wait until the daffodils die back a little bit before I put them out here. But it's kind of interesting. They're going for the mineral rich dandelion stems. Here is, this is Ebony. And you can see she is just going for the dandelion stems. Now they have a mineral lick. They have access to a mineral lick all the time. But the dandelion is so, even the stems, she is literally just eating the flower heads, the seed heads, and the stems, which means that there's something in the dandelions that all these milky yos are craving, and they're getting out of the dandelion, even though they have access to a really good mineral lick. They're literally grazing the dandelion stems. Now, classic example, that yo there is giving herself some uh, fly repellent. What they do a lot of the time, they graze the top part of the cow parsley and then they whack their heads about on the thick stemmy bits at the bottom. The thick stemmy bits have a juice in it and that's the fly repellent. So they're basically uh, give, whacking their heads around and so that the juices go all over their heads and it's, it acts as a fly repellent to keep the flies away. See, look, they're eating them as well because they love cow parsley. They love eating it, but they also like giving it the fly repellent. You can see there's another yo in there bashing her head about in the cow parsley. You can see the cow parsley waving. So that's, there's another one waving the cow parsley. So that usually means that the yo is dressing her face with the uh, sap within the cow parsley to deter flies from buzzing around her face. So, and you can see how deep the grass is. The puppies and Inca are nearly hidden in it. <laughs> How's puppers? How's puppers? Yeah. Oh yeah, how are you? So that is some examples of what's happening and why I love turning them out in this really diverse sward uh, to see what they're eating. 
You can see there's the oak tree paddock over there. They're not going over there yet. Uh, they'll be over there at some later time. I just want them in here. And look, there's some cuckoo flower. Or uh, lady smock. Some people call it lady smock. But it's a beautiful, delicate flower. And you can see the clover in here. And there's a different kind of grass again. So there's a lot of uh, variety in this field. One day it'd be wonderful to have a somebody who's an expert in grasses and herbs to come here and figure out how many different species I have in this one field. It's the one that I've worked on for the longest to get a diverse sward. You can see down here, there's, here are the daffodils dying back. You need to have them kind of like that, kind of in that yellow phase that I can then turn the sheep in. But look at all the bluebells. The field is dotted with bluebells. There's more of them eating the cow parsley. This is a lime tree, which when it comes in flower, hums with bees. It's a wonderful tree to have for pollinators because it has profuse pollen in the summer months. And then down by the road, you can see the uh, horse chestnuts in flower. But all these guys are very, very happy with, I was treating her feet. Yes, Willow, you forgive me. Yes. I know. Yes. So that's, this is what one wants one's field to look like with a, a multi-species sward of innumerable different grasses and herbs. And so the sheep can essentially self-medicate, graze, treat themselves for flies uh, around the face, which is annoying. So look, that old lady, she's hitting the bluebells. She's loving the bluebells. Yeah, loving the bluebells. Anyway, that gives you an idea of what I'm trying to get all my fields to be like, is as many different grasses and herbs as possible. Because that way they have, um, can self-medicate and they have a variety of diet and they can treat themselves for all different things. So there they are disappearing in amongst the cow parsley. By tomorrow morning, most of that cow parsley will be gone. They'll have consumed it all. Here's more diversity in this sward. You can see this uh, kind of a clover is really, really good for um, worm treatment and things like that. I think this is the clover, but it's a, uh, creeping clover. A lot of people call it, have it different names. See, and here's, here's some yarrow, cowslip, buttercup, daisies, uh, another, uh, again, another kind of dandelion. Uh, loads of different clovers. You can see there's different clovers in here and yarrows and purple clovers and white clovers and and this is, you can see, this is a plantain that's down there. This is one variety of grass. It is going to seed, but that's okay. There's a load of different, here's a lot more plantains. The longleaf plantain is the one that uh, it really does well in the field. So it's a very, very diverse sward. Um, daisies, etc. So... And these ladies are, this lady is very happy, munching the buttercups. And then, of course, yeah, it's a little bit. You're at the wrong gate, love. Look, you have to come down here. Pepper knows where he's going. So it's very, lush, deep grass, you can see. 